Morning, folks. Happy Friday. Hope you are well. Well, this morning's video is going to be a little tutorial on smoking a pipe. Um, I mentioned this in one of my previous videos last week, or earlier this week, um, that um, I would be doing a kind of a pipe smoking 101 kind of video, just to give the basics for people out there who are struggling with getting into pipe smoking. I have, uh, I'm have i in the middle of a sort of a series of, of emails toing and froing with uh, uh, a pipe smoker, a relatively new pipe smoker who's going through a difficult time. Most of his pro, the main issue he's having is, is not getting flavors out of his tobacco. Um, I recently sent him a diverse range of tobaccos. So with the hope that because they were so diverse, that um, it would be easier for him to discern uh, different flavors, but it seems that that hasn't really helped. So I don't know if there's some issue. Um, I did ask him if, if he's having issues with flavor with other things in his life, like uh, food and drink and things like that. And he said, no, no, no issue at all. Um, people sort of commented and said, maybe he has COVID or anything like that. So clearly that's not the issue. Um, if he's able to, to taste other things. So it's an interesting one. I will say this, when I first started smoking cigars, I kind of had a similar experience. They all tasted the same to me. They all had the same kind of generic cigar-y kind of taste. And I, I really was at a point in the beginning where I wasn't going to continue it. But at some point, obviously, um, things clicked into place and um, I was able to discern different flavors. Um, I, I, it's, I, I don't know what it is. I, mean, I don't know if it, it's just a matter of your, your brain acclimatizing to something different, to a new experience to new levels of uh, flavor intensity where it has to adjust and it has to calibrate, if you like, to um, to start to discern those flavors. Uh, you know, some people might just take longer than others. Um, you know, when we get, for instance, uh, one of my, my boys, my 11-year-old, uh, Rafi, he just got new glasses and he's struggling with them big time. And um, he was kind of not wearing them and because he just, he said it, it was, you know, the vision was too higgledy-piggledy. And I said to him, you know, it takes time for the brain to settle. You know, you say it takes time for your eyes to adjust. But in reality, it's your brain that needs to do the adjusting with the messages that it's getting, with the information that it's getting from the eyes. So with all things that change, the brain needs time to adjust. Cheers. So the first thing I would say is, like I said the other day, is, you know, if, if you're in a, at a point where you're frustrated, um, and you're kind of getting a bit fed up. You of course, have the option of just giving up on pipe smoking, but the danger of giving up pipe smoking is that you might take up some other form of smoking, which may not be, um, which may be far more detrimental to your health. So I would say like this, if you're getting frustrated, put down the pipe, leave it for a few hours or another day and come back to it and start again. Now, if you start again and keep doing the same thing, you're gonna continue getting frustrated. So I thought, um, they've asked me to do a video or a live, so what I've decided to do is to do this recorded video um, and then um, possibly do a live which can be a follow-up. So anybody who, who's interested, the vast majority of people who are on the YTPC will already be smoking a pipe successfully, but for those few people who are not and are having issues, you may want to watch this and possibly, and if you find it uh, useful, uh, then possibly I'll follow it up. If there's If there's an interest, I'll follow it up with a live dedicated to this topic and then uh, people can ask questions and we can sort of smoke a pipe live from beginning to end and that kind of thing. Other people can chime in who have also got experience and give their advice, you know, so it might be an interesting thing to do. Um, so where to start? So the first thing I would say is to start is, is, is choosing a pipe. Um, pipes, shapes, sizes are diverse, obviously, you know, got different brands, different makers, different styles, if you're starting up smoking, I would say go for go for something simple. Uh, you don't want to have something that's going to present with you a channel a, ch a challenge where you're going to have to adjust the way you fill the pipe and and how you smoke it, and it's going to get complicated because of the shape. So you want to go for something fairly straightforward. So go for something which is either straight, so either uh, just a classically shaped pipe like that with a straight shank, where it's going to have the smoothest journey for the smoke and being a straight pipe the chances are it's going to be drilled well it should be it's much more a much greater chance of it being drilled well compared to a bent pipe or go for a 
something which is maybe just slightly bent. This is really a straight pipe in, to all intents and purposes. I just uh, changed watches in case the doorbell goes. It'll chime on my watch because I'm using the phone. I'm not sure if it will chime whilst I'm in the middle of recording. It probably will, but just in case. So go for something straightforward. I would say ideally a straight pipe, but possibly even you know, a pipe which is slightly bent. I don't think that's a major issue. You know, something like this would be fine. Um, I wouldn't recommend going for something which is fully bent um, initially. There's no reason why not really, other than the fact that there's more of a chance that um, there could be issues, that's all, with the drilling. Um, so I'll tell you, you've got sort of a better knowledge of pipes and, and the inner workings of a pipe. I would say go for either a straight pipe or something like that, which is slightly bent. Um, today, and I would also say as well, is get something with an average sized shank and stem. You know, um, s something like the rosebud, like that. That's also a pretty reasonable size, um, but you don't want to go for a tiny little pipe, a stubby, a stubby pipe. Um, going for a stubby pipe means that the smoke has a very short distance to travel, which means it's got less time to cool down, even though it's virtually instantaneous. I mean, the time it takes for smoke to travel from there to there is nothing, it's milliseconds. And the time it takes for it to travel, it's for argument's sake, taking it to an extreme, for this pipe and that pipe is a difference of milliseconds, but there's a difference. And in that time, the smoke cools a bit more. So I would say go for something of an average size, something like that. And Ideally, do this when you've finished your smoke. Fold it in half, just swirl it around. You don't want to remove every little bit of carbon that's in there because the carbon helps to protect the bowl and to resist heat. And you do the same with the stem. Just give that a quick curl so it helps if it's a bent pipe. And just go backwards and forwards. If it comes out dirty like that, then you still need to clean it. So you can dip it in, al in alcohol, that will help to clean it as well. But uh, ideally, you want to keep putting in pipe cleaners until it comes out clean. Alright, that's pretty good. I use filters. Now, just give it a blow through so that any fluff from the pipe cleaner is expelled. I oh, had a bit of tobacco in the draft hole there. Now, I use a filter, not for the filtration per se, but because it does filter, but it filters out the, the moisture, which can be one of the causes of tongue bite. I suffer terribly with tongue bite, and despite my best efforts in combating it, I've not been able to do that. So um, around 2018, somebody must have suggested it, that I try a filter, and it's made all the difference, and I could smoke anything. So, But I would say initially, when you start smoking, start smoking, if you can, without a filter, unless you want the filtration um, that it provides in terms of the nicotine, the tar, and everything else that it filters the smoke for. That's your choice, obviously. Um, bear in mind that when you do smoke with a filter, there could be some additional resistance in the drawer, so you might want to, when you load the pipe, not compress it as much. That's called a lighter pack. Um, you need to pack it more lightly so that it compensates for the tighter draw because of the filter. Uh, the pipes that I make are made to kind of overcompensate for that so I over drill it so that there's plenty of room in there so that it doesn't have that effect so much and the draw is pretty good. Um, 
so this is more going to be focused around the actual smoking of the pipe maintenance of the pipe you know there's plenty of videos out there and if somebody wants i don't mind doing another video in, in terms of maintenance and that kind of thing so now you've got your pipe with or without a filter depending on your preference you want to smoke some tobacco or prepare some tobacco so get yourself um something to put it on i've got a leather tray um very kindly gifted to me by alex um amr pipes i think it's called thanks alex um or you can just use a paper towel paper plate or whatever there's no fixed rule about having a particular uh type of tray i'm going to be smoking ogs which is all it golden sliced now there's lots of different types of tobacco again that's that can be a different video but for the sake of argument i'm going to be smoking all it golden sliced which is a flake um it comes in either flakes or in long belts this is the 100 gram tin version which comes in in long belts and it flakes apart really quite easily so i tend to rub it out by just balling it up in the palm of my hand giving it a squeeze and then rubbing it like that and then just letting it drop to the tray and then i'll pull just grab the whole thing and pull it in half and again and again and then just separate it just spread it around the tray and just leave it there for a few minutes that will depend on the moisture content that it has you don't want it to be too wet if you need if you put your tobacco in and it's too wet it's gonna be really hard to keep a light you're gonna continuously be lighting it and drawing on it too often in order to keep it alight that will overheat it and that will give you tongue bite and that will also ruin the taste um, so the way to measure if the humidity is ideal or not just put all your tobacco together in the middle there and just push it all together like that if it all sticks there and doesn't spring back out then it's too moist it's starting to spring out now it's almost it's a little bit too moist i'm going to let it sit there for a little bit longer but if it springs back out slowly then that's fairly good to go if when you push it it starts to crumble because it's so dry then it's too brittle and it's too dry then you need to ideally either get a more humid bit of tobacco or you need to humidify the tobacco which you can do in various different ways but again i'm not going to focus on that now um those are all different topics which you can find other videos on there and i've done a video of it as well in the past so um, you do a search on rehumidifying pipe tobacco and i'm sure you'll find it um so for the sake of argument we're going to assume that you've got tobacco which has got an average amount of humidity in it you let it sit out for a couple of minutes sometimes it can be two minutes sometimes it can be five and sometimes it could be ten minutes you spread it out thinly so it humidifies well while that's sitting there a good uh tip if you do have tobacco which is just a little bit on the dry side is literally just breathe on it because the humidity that comes out of your hot breath your warm breath is usually enough there's enough humidity in there to just humidify it enough and you'll see the tobacco start to soften what you can do as well is load the pipe just gently trickle in the tobacco load it and gently blow through so that's also putting in some humidity and blow on it from the top and that's usually enough to get you going and it should be fine yeah so it's it's springing back a lot better now and you know it only takes a couple of minutes now loading your pipe there are me various methods i'm going to give you the straightforward one and the concept behind it the main thing that you want to do when you're loading your tobacco is to ensure well there's a few main things <laughs> about you want to ensure number one that it's not too compressed which if it's too compressed it will prevent oxygen getting through the tobacco fire needs oxygen it needs air without it it won't st stay alight you put a match you put a cup over it it's going to go out straight away because it's starved of oxygen 
The same with your burning ember, or some people call it the cherry. The same thing happens here. If you don't have air coming through to the ember, it's going to die out. And don't worry, if, don't worry if it does. Pipes go out all the time. Um, and that, with time, that will come and you'll learn how to keep it alight and to puff it just enough so that it stays alight all the time. You don't want to over puff because it overheats. So the whole, the, the ideal way to smoke a pipe is that you're literally puffing it enough to keep it smoldering and gently, slowly burning down. You don't want it to be going like a furnace um, because that's gonna, you're gonna lose flavor. If it's too hot, you're gonna lose flavor. You wanna keep the temperature down as much as possible. Um, when you first light a pipe, obviously you have to have a flame and you have to be drawing on it so the flames, so the, it's gonna get hot when you light it. But you gotta, once it's lit, then you've got to let it settle down and we'll get to the lighting in a second so make sure that it's not too compressed the tobacco so that therefore there's oxygen going through all the little gaps between each little piece of tobacco so the most common method is the three film the three layer method so you take tobacco and you gravity fill and in other words you don't push it down you just drip it in and it literally let gravity do the job and you you just tap it without touching the tobacco itself just tap it so it settles a little bit inside and you can see there it's about half full at the moment that's your first layer you can just put your finger on it just to compress it a little bit so that it takes a shape and it's um, level inside the pipe second gravity fill Tap it and you'll see that gently go in there. That's the second fill and it's at the top. You can give it a little slightly firmer push on the second fill and that takes you to about two thirds full. Don't push down, literally you're just forming a level. The, the cap of the tobacco, you want it to be level. That's the amount of force that you want, no more than that. So we're about two thirds full now, you probably can't see that. But we're about two thirds full. You take the rest of your tobacco and you pour it in. I do it like this because then tobacco always goes over the sides and I just close my finger over it so that the tobacco all goes into the middle. And now you can start to just slowly work your way around, make sure that there is very slight compression at the top but only again it's only slight you're not forcing down you're just literally touching it to give it a little bit of uniformity to flatten the top a little bit if there's no compression at all then when you light the tobacco the tobacco beneath it is not going to be connected to it so it's going to keep going out so you want a, very, a little bit of compression and then later on we'll use the tamper to improve on that compression now draw and check that it's not too tight and it's not too loose. You want there to be, what they say, the same resistance as sucking through a straw. So that when you suck through a straw, if you're sucking air, there's no resistance. You put it into a drink or into a milkshake or something like that, there's resistance. You suck on it and it comes up through the straw. You want there to be a similar kind of resistance as if you were sucking something through a straw, which is what I've got here. All right, we need to light our pipe. So you can either use matches, you can use a lighter. Do not use a torch flame. Number one, it's too hot. And number two, you'll ruin your pipe. You'll burn through your pipe. I tend to use a match when I'm starting off the pipe. I just like the way a match works. I like the softness of the flame and the temperature is about right for me. And then usually as I'm working my way down the pipe, I'll often use a lighter for that. I use these matches which I buy in Denmark from the Danish pipe shop. The only reason why I buy these is simply because they're a little bit longer than the average match, just a little bit. It gives you enough time to light a pipe. When you strike your match, just let it burn off the sulfur because that will add a, a flavor which you don't want.
you gently draw on the pipe so that it draws down the flame. Another match. Talking too much. You don't want to draw too fast, but you just want to, want to draw the flame down, down and just hover over and slowly in a circular motion, make sure that you light the whole of the top of the tobacco. Oftentimes you'll see the tobacco rise towards you because of the heat as it expands. Turn your extractor on. Now, a lot of people talk about a false light, which means you light the top of the tobacco and you let it go out. And it'll do that quite quickly. Take your tamper. You want a small, round, flat tamper. Ideally, or if you get one which is concave, slightly curved on the inside, that's great. But certainly, you don't want it uh, rounded or anything like that. Uh, is it convex when it's rounded outwardly? Either way, gently tap it. Try and use a tamper that the edges are quite sh sort of straight and sharp. That way, you go round the pipe, round the walls of the pipe as well. As you go, you do that, and you go round the edges so that the whole of the ember is flat and horizontal. What we're doing here is joining the top layer of the ember to the rest of the tobacco. So when you light it, it'll continue to burn the tobacco as you go down. You might have to tap quite a few times as you go down the bowl. That's normal. And the lighter that you pack it, the more often you'll need to do it. The advantage of packing it light is that when you tamp it, as you smoke it, it's not going to compress too much because you've left plenty of room there, plenty of air pockets in there to give room for compression. If you pack it too tight in the beginning, once you start tamping, the drawer's gonna get too tight. So you can see the glow. It's pretty horizontal across the whole of the ember, which is what you want. You can just touch up with a tamp again, just to keep it all nice and horizontal and to make sure the burning ember is connected to the tobacco below. Very gentle tamps. Don't, put, put, don't force it down. Just literally just tapping, very gentle. If you, if, you, if you put too much effort into tamping, you're pushing the tobacco down too far and you're gonna hit problems further down the bowl. Take small sips of smoke. You might find that you need to relight a few times could be the humidity wasn't spot on, or just that I'm talking too much. There's no shame in that. I remember I was once being interviewed for a pipe club and people watching, um, as a pipe maker and pipe smoker, they assumed that I'd be expert at keeping a pipe alight. And somebody commented um, as I was getting towards the end of the interview, well, I don't have to feel bad anymore because it, he had to light his pipe four times during the whole conversation. That person obviously felt that it was a, uh, a negative thing to have to relight your pipe a few times. 
it showed the lack of skill or something in pipe smoking, not at all. It so happened in that particular event, I was being interviewed, so I was talking a lot. But even if not, there's no, there's nothing wrong with having to relight your pipe. That's a perfect, perfectly normal part of smoking a pipe. Gently sip. When you've sipped, close your mouth. Let your tongue sort of smack, as, as they call it, your, your lips and tongue smack. Let them join with the top of your palate and you start to get those flavors. Try to uh, perceive the flavors, try to allow the flavors to um, settle in your mouth and in your mind. A lot of tobaccos, when they produce smoke, the oiliness, if it's an oily type of tobacco, the oiliness will be in the smoke and you could feel it on your tongue, you could feel it on your lips and you can get those additional flavors from those oils as well. Take your time to savor it. Until you sort of more relaxed about pipe smoking, until you've got, um, you've got it down pat, so to speak, try if you can to smoke in a peaceful environment, not around your kids, not, ar not around your significant other, um, and perhaps not even around pets if they're boisterous. Just try to be on your own until you've sort of honed your skill at pipe smoking. Sit in the car, sit in your garden shed, or just sit at home, but try to be on your own. That's, I, I, I don't recommend generally to be on your own, but for this, whilst you're learning to smoke a pipe, try to be on your own and sort of in a relaxed frame of mind. Make sure you've got a comfortable seat, make sure you have a drink. Um, another thing I would, this is just as an aside, um, always drink when you're smoking a pipe. Um, a hot tea, a coffee, a cold drink, whatever your fa favorite drink is. But the recommendation is, I mean, a lot of people don't do this, but I certainly keep to this, is not to drink alcohol while you're smoking a pipe. And not because it um, ruins the experience, although it can probably have an effect on your taste, um, but more about the alcohol. It's said, I've seen it written, um, don't uh, sort of take my word for it, you can do the research yourself, but the guidance is, is not to because the alcohol strips away the mucus in your mouth, the protective mucus that's in your mouth, that's resident in your mouth. And when you strip that away and then you smoke, the smoke is getting direct contact with your with your with the interior of your mouth. Um, so your mouth is unprotected because it's not to say that with it, you're gonna be fine. I can't give you any guarantees in that respect, but certainly things that you can do to help yourself, why not do them? So the advice is ideally not to drink alcohol whilst you're smoking a pipe in order not to strip away those protective layers that are there in your mouth. A drink which I find is a very good refresher for your mouth, a cleanser. Is, is um, I'm not sponsored or anything like that, but I find Diet Coke to be very, very good as a cleanser to refresh the palate. Don't brush your teeth just before because that will affect the taste, your taste buds. But certainly have very good oral hygiene for your own health, for the sake of your health. Um, when you're smoking, again, for the same reasons as I mentioned before, oral hygiene is very important for two reasons. Number one, for your safety, and number two, to keep your f your mouth fresh, to keep your flavor, um, uh, your taste buds um, fresh. So ideally, you want to brush your teeth and your tongue and your cheeks um, twice a day, morning and evening at least. An average bowl, you know, if you're not smoking it like a freight train, you know, it should last you. Um, this is a 
probably something like a group four, which is an average sized bowl. Um, it should last you uh, something like a half hour if you've packed it the way I've shown you. If you pack it more tightly um, with more tobacco in there, it'll last you longer, or if you smoke it quicker, it'll take less time. So all those th these are all variations which you'll get used to yourself and you'll find your own happy medium. Whilst you're smoking, if you feel that it's starting to go out, you know, the smoke output is reduced significantly and you feel it's about to go out, just put your thumb or a couple of fingers over the bowl and draw. That creates a bit of a vacuum. And so when you draw, it pulls down the ember onto the tobacco. It's like tamping, but you're not tamping, but you're doing it in a softer way. So you're closing that off. And when you suck, it pulls down the tobacco, it compresses it. That way the ember touches the tobacco beneath and it stokes up the fire. Yeah, you can see the output is increasing. And that's just a good way to keep your fire lit. If you go to a smoke, slow smoking competitions, you know, each one has, each club has their own rules. Some of them allow you to do that. Some of them don't. You do that that's a, because a lot of them don't allow you to use a tamper. And that's the whole point of the competition. So you, you know, so that you light your pipe in the best possible way and then keep it going without having to uh, aid um, it's uh, uh, keeping it alight as you go along by using a tamper. The main thing is try to be relaxed and just focus on the flavors that you're getting. Don't smoke it too often and too quickly. couple of little draws, little sips, and then let it go for a bit, maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds, something like that. As you get more used to it, you'll be able to do it more often and more quickly um, without any problems. But uh, if you're trying to keep the ember to a reasonable temperature, you don't want it to overheat, and you're trying to get the best flavors, then you don't want it to get too warm. For me, a key part of flavor is the retrohale. The retrohale is a way of, uh, when you draw in, normally you wouldn't inhale the tobacco and you'll just exhale straight away. You don't take it into your lungs, but you can blow it out through your nose and that's called, ex uh, that's called a retrohale. So you draw in, So you can see that I've just sort of relit it just by covering it over. And then you can blow it through the nose. And for me, it increases a lot of the flavor. Again, something like retrohaling will, you'll, you'll develop your own uh, way of smoking and how much you retrohale and, and how much of an effect it has on the way you smoke. So for instance, for me, um, especially Latakia blends, um, which are smoky and musty kind of flavor, I find that they're greatly enhanced by retro retrohaling. There's a lot of um, taste glands in the nasal passage um, possibly even more in the nasal passage than there are in the mouth. 
um, and you really get a lot of extra flavor if you do exhale through your nose. Well, I think that's enough for now um, as a, a general guide to smoking your pipe. Um, there are lots of areas you could branch out, it, branch, branch out into, um, such as you know the, the pipe maintenance, um, humidity of your tobacco, selecting the type of tobacco, going into all of the different types of tobaccos, Virginia's Burleys, Virginia Burleys, Virginia Periques, Latakias, Kentucky, there's a whole raft of different um, Cavendishes, different um, tobaccos which you could get into. But as I say, it's it's a another huge topic. Um, and there are other ways of filling the pipe as well. So you know, perhaps I'll do other videos on that. But I think that to get you going and to start you off, the simplest, least complicated way of doing things is trickle feed it, gravity feed it two or three times and very lightly um, sort of settle the top layer but don't push down and that will allow you to do your tamping throughout your pipe without it getting too compressed and tightening up your draw that's probably the key thing I would tell you out of this whole video hence I've said it again and um, this video is now I don't know it's a few clips so I'm not sure what the total is it's probably around four, half an hour 40 minutes and uh, we're coming towards the end of the bowl now. And I can feel the draw starting to tighten up because we're getting to the end and I've been tamping, 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 tightening things up. So it's getting towards the end now. Some people will take uh, a device or, or maybe even the other side of a match, the clean side of a match, and just move things around a little bit to loosen it up again. Um, I don't like doing that because you're mixing fresh tobacco with burnt tobacco I just don't like that but um, you might want to do that and see if that helps you as you get towards the end of the bowl the main thing is enjoy I hope that's been of interest have a great day catch you on the next one